The Rabbi Zechariah sexual assault scandal has been surfacing the internet and the reason this is different than the Carl Lenz mistress situation that I did a review on which I will put um, in the description box below that you can watch is that Rainin, the mistress, had enthusiastic consent. There's a big issue here that we're not really talking about. Well, at least the channels that I've watched aren't really talking about. They're kind of siding with Rabbi saying, everyone falls short. Everyone, everyone doesn't meet the glory of God. Everyone this, everyone that. Kind of like just not making it as bad as it is. When in reality, do you know that when you get sexually assaulted or you get put in a situation like that, you can carry that for the rest of your life? Did you know that every single person that you try to have a relationship with or pursue in a marriage context or whatever it is that you're doing in your dating life, you have to tell them what happened to you? And do you know that some people don't take that very well? And I know this because I am a survivor of sexual assault and my four year anniversary for it is coming up on January 22nd. And it's taken me years to even talk about it publicly, which I know God wants me to do so that there can be freedom for other people that follow me on this platform. And, and I'm really not trying to make this about me because trust me, I really don't want anyone knowing that this happened to me. It's disgusting. It's humiliating. It's very shameful. I've had men that, um, cause I'm, I'm a single Christian woman, but I am dating. I've been single for four years. I haven't been in a relationship um, in a long time. And you know, I've had men before that didn't want to be with me just because I have been sexually assaulted. Do you know how damaging that is to someone's spirit, to someone's um, soul, to just the every part of their being, how worthless that makes them feel? Like, so tying this back into the Rabbi Zechariah situation those women have to tell someone this situation now. And, and these women aren't trying to get clout. They're not trying to get followers. They're not trying to have this a self-gain process. They didn't even want to say who they were. And I don't blame them. That's how we are. Because in this society, as sexual assault victims, we feel pressured to protect the other person and not present justice when it's due. One in five women get sexually assaulted. And that's just the numbers that are recorded. It is way higher than that because every friend that I have, <clears throat> excuse me, every friend that I have has been assaulted and not enthusiastically consented to, to a sexual experience. And it's completely rewired the way that they see sex. And sex is a good thing. And God designed sex for that covenant relationship of marriage for you to enjoy it and to um, to glorify God with doing. But the, the problem happens when sin comes in this world, which is what Ravi did to these women. He completely sinned against them. And that's not something that you can just say, everyone sins again, everyone sins and we all fall short of the glory of God. No, 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 no. I mean, yes, yes, that is very true. But it's it's not just brushed off like it's it's no big deal. Like these are things that these women probably have had panic attacks about. They probably have maybe contemplated committing suicide about. They feel disgusting. They don't feel like any man is ever gonna actually wanna be with them because they see them as used or damaged goods or all these other things. And even even as a Christ follower, you can still experience those feelings. Those are feelings that I've experienced. I've had to remake this video, if I'm being honest and transparent, like 20 times because I would break down and I would just start crying because it just hit a, it hit a chord in me that I'm just like, I'm all these things are coming out about these leaders, about how they're failing. And, and it's very sad. And even the one with Carl Lenz and his, and his wife and his family and Raina, it's very sad and devastating. But they both chose to do that. That's the difference, is that these women with Rabbi, they didn't choose, they didn't want that. I doubt they wanted to, ew, just some of the stories were so gross, like, you guys, were it was just so nasty, like, and it just struck a chord in me whenever I found out, and I was just like, wow, I felt like God was telling me, it's time for you to come forward and for you to help share these stories correlated with the ones that you've been through so that, so that I, meaning him, can, can provide healing through the stories. And so all things will be worked together for the good of those who love God. So that means that the experiences that you went through that you're scared to share too, they're going to be worked together for your good and for God's glory. So that's one of the things that I wanted to say. Um, 
And let me see. So kill your sin or your sin is going to kill you. We need to identify the sin and we need to be responsible. This is one of the last things, guys. We need to be responsible for our sin 100%. We are called to be a people that, sh <laughs> I can't talk, that sheds light, that spreads love, that shares the encouragement of the gospel and the healing powers of Jesus Christ. And that is so true. That means you have to take accountability for your sin. That means you can't just pretend that you're not doing it, especially whenever you sin against other people, because your sin and your lack of control over your life will cause decades of harm and grief and disappointment and shame in someone else's life. And that's just this fallen world. Yes, but it's not, oh, that's just everyone does it. No, like these women, like we, uh, it just like makes me so irritated because... <sighs> okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get emotional um, because I already did that like <laughs> past five days. So this says we, wait, I want to share. No, that's the wrong one. So this says, so own up to your sins to one another and pray for one another. In the end, you may be healed. Your prayers are powerful when they are rooted in righteous life. That's James 5, 16. We are called to repent. So you are called to own up to the things that you've done that are wrong. But if you have been wronged against, that's not your sin. That's someone else's sin. And I've even watched videos by, I think it was Mike Todd and, and some other pastors that they put sexual assault victims and they, just the wording of it, they call it sin. It's like, that's not my sin. That's his sin because he doesn't have self-control because he is not who he says he was or she says who she was it's i think it was like one in 50 men get sexually assaulted and one in five women get sexually assaulted and the problem with this is we live in this culture where we want to protect the perpetrator we need to get out of that culture and if you are watching this and you have been violated in any way and it makes you feel disgusting, if, if anyone has ever told you before that they don't want to be with you because that happened to you, then that is, they're not from God anyways. Because the person that God has for you, he is going to pray over you even before he meets you. He is going to want healing in your life. He's going to declare the goodness and the fruits of God over your life. And he's going to want to re recreate those experiences in the context of marriage with you. And have you healed from those broken things that were put on you from someone else's baggage. Like, we can't project our baggage on other people. And if it, if it has happened to you, maybe it's time to go to counseling. Maybe this is that little nudge in your spirit. But this doesn't actually tamper your worth. Because someone touched you in a way that, that they couldn't control. Or because um, maybe you even messed up and you went too far in a way. Like, there's different types of sexual sin. But especially in the context of assaults and violations and rape. It's just like... That does not tarnish your value. Your value comes from Christ alone. Nothing actually happens physically to your body. You're not demorphed because of this. You are not purposeless because of this. God has a plan for this crappy piece to be put together in the puzzle of life that he has your name on. And I want to encourage you to be courageous, to speak out, and to um, pray for healing over your life. And if there's anyone watching this that even is another victim of rabbi or another sexual soul, the organization has called you to come forward. So this is your time to come forward as a people. And even if you're not saved, even if you're not a Christian, if you don't believe in the same God that I do, um, just know that that your value is not, is not built on who sinned against you and who took things from you. It's built on the foundation that you are loved unconditionally, you have value, and your life has a purpose. And you need to believe that, and we need to put blame where blame is due, and it is not on the survivors. So that's what I'm going to end with. Um, I hope that you guys took value out of this video. I'm very proud of myself for not crying, and I want to start doing more content on sexual assault and the church and um, the healing that I believe God wants to put in store in this season.